Hi, I'm David Schuth. I'm a middle school science teacher here at Sycamore School, and one of my passions is gaming. I've been asked to talk about uh, games, and this seems to be an appropriate time, uh, what with people being sequestered at home and having plenty of time with their families. So first, I'm going to talk about some of the gateway games, uh, games that are popular um, across the board for a lot of different people and are perennial favorites. Uh, one is called Catan. Uh, it used to be called Settlers of Catan, but now it's just called Catan. This one's really easy to find. It's now made by Asmodee. I'm going to go ahead and list the companies just in case it helps you find the game. Uh, another one is Ticket to Ride. This is actually the anniversary edition, special edition, but what it is is a mix of kind of a gin rummy and with your card collection and also uh, map building. Uh, another one is called Dixit. Uh, Dixit, this is one where you take some strange looking art and you turn it into a story and people kind of guess which one the story relates to. Um, somewhat like apples to apples but with art. And the other two I'd like to mention are Splendor, um, which has just come out in a Marvel edition if you like Marvel. But there's also another game called Dominion, which came out with a second edition. All the four games are Asmodee. The fifth game, Dominion, comes out by Rio Grande Games. Next, I'd like to talk about some games that are perfect for early childhood age children. Uh, the, one of the first ones is called First Orchard. And this is a great little cooperation game where instead of having direct winners or losers, you're all winning together or losing together. Uh, kids learn how to uh, identify colors, they learn how to take turns, and they also learn how to lose appropriately. Uh, another game that I really like is called Go Away Monster. With Go Away Monster, uh, what you have is everyone gets their own bedroom, and you have a collection of things that go in the bedroom with lamps and pictures and a little teddy bear and a bed, but in mixed in the bag with that are monsters. And so on your turn, you reach into the bag and try to feel the correct thing. If you need a bed, you try to picture a bed and grab it. But sometimes you're grabbing a monster by mistake. And if you do, you say, go away, monster, and you throw it back into the box. Um, now, this game is so wonderful that when they remade it, I went ahead and bought it so that I could use it with my grandchildren many years in the future. Uh, this one is uh, not that easy to find, but Amazon swears that it's going to be out by December 7th. So if it is, go out and grab it. If you have two-year-old children, three-year-old children, four-year-old children, they all love this. This is a great game to learn how to take turns, and kids love it. Another game that I really like is uh, Sleeping Queens. This is for older, early childhood uh, kids. Uh, what you have is a series of queen cards that are all sleeping and they can only be woken up if you draw a king card. So you could have the cookie king, you could have the bubblegum king, the chess king, the pasta king. You say, well, I'm going to wake up with the cookie king, I'm going to wake up this queen. It just so happens to be the rainbow queen and the rainbow queen is worth five points. Once you get enough points, then you can win the game. Now, of course, there are other things that can uh, take away your queen. Uh, someone could play a sleeping potion on the queen, and the queen goes back to sleep, and you've lost the queen. Or a dragon can capture the queen, and so someone else gets the queen, and not you anymore. Or the knight could rescue the queen from the dragon. And uh, the, the magic wand saves you from the sleeping potion, and the gesture just goes wild as far as what you draw. But in addition to all that excitement, there are also just number cards. And with the number cards, you can uh, add them up, you can subtract them to do math, you can match them up such that you can uh, use it to draw more cards more quickly and get the cards you're looking for. Uh, one other uh, game that I really like is called Rhino Hero. And Rhino Hero is kind of a dexterity game. And just like with any of these games, you can decide which rules to follow and which rules to break and which rules that your kids like. Um, and so on your turn, you get to play a card. And the previous person told you exactly how the walls of that next level have to be. And so they take cards, which you bend, and you add them up. So it really is a house of cards. And then you get to put your own roof on top. Now, according to the rules, 
um, it has to not fall down. Sometimes, however, Rhino Hero gets involved and they have to put Rhino Hero on as well. And so the next person says, okay, well this is where the walls go and so on and so forth until it gets taller and taller and then they have to put their own roof off. The, the rules say the person who wins is the person who gets rid of their roof tiles first but also the person who loses is the person who knocks it down and this can be played over and over fairly rapidly. So with lower school games this is a real mix between having fun and also learning to try new things. Uh, once again if it's not fun for your child you can either change the rules as they are or just disregard the game itself and try a new game. All right, It's all about having fun and good games let you make choices. And one of the games that I like is called Go Splits. Now this is a real mix between parents and kids because you'll find that kids get really good at this and adults find that they trail behind and kids love it when they can beat their parents at things. And what it is is a series of, of five objects, different colors. You have the white ghost, the green bottle, the red chair, the gray mouse, which is very cute of course, and the blue book. And what you do is you flip up a card and if the card itself matches exactly one of the objects, the first person to grab the object wins. And you say, well, that's easy enough. Well, then it gets more difficult because then if you flip up a card and it doesn't match any of the objects, notice that the uh, chair is not blue and the mouse is not white. Therefore, you have to see what's not represented. So you say, well, the mouse is represented, the chair is represented, the blue of the book is represented, and the white of the ghost is represented. The only thing missing is the bottle. And so the correct thing is to grab the bottle. If you happen to touch the wrong thing first, then you owe whoever gets the thing right, the card right, a card of your own. And whoever has the most cards at the end of the game wins the game. Very chaotic, very fun for kids. Another game I really like is called Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters by Mattel. And you guys are ghost fighting treasure hunters and you're trying to get into the mansion and rescue these gems which then fit into your backpack slots. But at the same time the house is being haunted by ghosts. So on your turn you roll the dice and you see how far you can go and whether or not uh, ghosts attack. Um, and the thing is the game populates more and more ghosts all the time. If you happen to have an area where there's three ghosts at once that area becomes haunted. If you have too many haunts in the game at one time then the game is over and you've lost. So you're trying to beat the ghosts by getting the treasures before too many ghosts come. There's also a battle version where you can go into an area with ghosts and roll the dice and try to eliminate the ghosts. If you roll ghosts then you're all set. If you roll blanks then you're not. Another game I like for lower school children is called Mountains and this one's by Haba. If you weren't paying attention earlier to the early childhood you notice that I really like Haba games especially for uh, younger children. Uh, Mountains is a little more involved than other Haba games in that it lets you make some serious choices. For this particular game is you need to go on hikes and achieve uh, certain things in your little stamp collection book. Essentially you can turn over a hike and you see how difficult it is by how much equipment you need to collect in order to achieve that hike. And if you do then collect the equipment or borrow the equipment from other players then you can go on the hike and either you collect favor stones or you can put stamps in your book. And so this is kind of like being a junior ranger where you could collect the right number of stamps. Most stamps collected in your book wins the game. Another game that I really like is called Problem Picnic Attack of the Ants. This one's uh, produced by Kids Table Board Gaming and this is a dexterity game where you have a picnic table that's full of um, well, little cards and you have dice and the dice have ants on it and you're trying to get as many ants on the picnic as possible. Now with middle school games it's getting increasingly more involved with a lot more choices but it's still a lot of fun. Uh, with these games it may even be who of you to hand over the rules to the children and have them teach you. Uh, the first one I'd like to talk about is King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo is kind of a Yahtzee variant in the sense that you're rolling a lot of dice 
and seeing what happens. So you can get uh, health, you can get uh, numbers. When the numbers match, then you can make attacks on other monsters. And the way that works is there's a certain number of victory points that you need, and you can dial it in on your little dial, and there's a certain amount of health that your monster has. When your monster is out of health, then they're done. Now, the only way that you can get victory points is to put your monster into Tokyo City. And that works out great. Every turn that you stay there, you earn victory points. However, the other monsters are attacking you to try to get you out. And so, on their turn, they're attacking you, and every time they attack you, you lose health. Every turn you stay there, you gain victory points, and eventually you decide, you know, I've, I've taken enough damage, I'm going to leave Tokyo, and it's someone else's turn to get into Tokyo. And so it's uh, a player elimination, but you're trying to get the most points first. Either you, uh, your monster dies, and you're out of the game, or you get the uh, correct amount of victory points to win the game. And it's just a dice chucking fest. In addition, you can power up your monsters. Uh, you can get uh, uh, your monster to be stretchy. You can get your monster to have an acid attack, a fire blast. You could have monster batteries, an extra head, all sorts of different advantages and mutations to give to your monster as you have monster attacks with the Yahtzee version. Another game that I really like is called Pandemic. Uh, this is a game that's been out for several years, even before there was a pandemic. Um, and what it is, it's, it's a fun version of life as we live it now. Uh, the way it works is on your turn, you're looking at the globe and there are four different diseases that you're trying to prevent from spreading. You flip up a card and it says, well, it shows up in Khartoum. So you say, okay, some of that disease shows up in Khartoum. And the next time, maybe some of it shows up in Sao Paulo and Lagos. But what happens is if there's already some infection there and there's already three cubes of disease, if you add or try to add a fourth one, then there's an outbreak. And it breaks out and you add disease to all the areas around it. Now, of course, if one of those areas also has three, then there's a second outbreak. If you have too many outbreaks, then you've lost the game. If you run through the cards, then you've lost the game. If, <laughs> uh, I want to say, if you uh, run out of cubes to put on the board, you've lost the game. So there's a lot of ways to lose the game. However, you're working together with everyone else. And so you move around from place to place and you work together and say, well, where should we go first? What should we do? And if you go to a place, you can cure that place of disease. Um, if you collect enough cards, and spend them, you can actually cure a disease. And if you're able to get it off the board while it's cured, you're eradicating the disease and it never comes back, even if the card is flipped up. The goal is to find cures for all four diseases before the game ends. Uh, it's very difficult to finish, but it's a lot of fun when you can beat the game together. If you really like it, the next step is to go for Pandemic Legacy. Now, Pandemic Legacy Season 1 is where I would start. There's now a Season 2 and a Season 0. 1 was the first one out, and I think it works really well. It's like Pandemic, but there's a story involved. And as you go through, every time you make a decision as a team, since it's a cooperative game, the game changes permanently. So it's a series of 15 to 20 games of Pandemic, but it's story-driven. The story changes and each game has its own goals. If you meet the goals, the story progresses. And if you can't meet the goals, then the game gives you a little extra help for the next time you try. Um, this one's quite a bit more involved. Uh, if you like Pandemic, however, you might enjoy Pandemic Legacy. The next game I'd like to talk about, it reminds me a little bit of Candy Crush, but in board game form, it's called Potion Explosion. And what you have here is a series of potions that you want to make but you need certain colors to do it. And so on your turn, you can look at the board and say, well, I need some black ones, and so I'm going to remove this red marble. If I remove the red marble, you have one chance to remove one marble on your turn, then the black ones smack into each other and quote unquote explode. So all the black ones that are now touching, I get to pick up. And so not only do I get all the black ones, but I have the red one as well, so I can add the black ones to this potion, and I can add the red ones to this potion. Um, now, 
On the other hand, let's say I was going for the blue, I could pick up this middle blue one, and the blues would smack together, which means that I get to explode them and grab them. But as I do that, now the reds smack into each other, and they explode, and I get to collect those. And now the black ones smack into each other, and I explode, and I get those. And the blue ones smack into each other, and I get those. So now I'm left with a handful of marbles, and I can complete these potions. So as you complete the potions with the marbles, they flip over, and you can use them later for their special powers. In addition, they give you victory points toward the end. Now the game is about victory points, but a lot of the fun is in exploding all the marbles and getting all the potions. All right, another game I really enjoy, and this one's more for middle school students just because of the possible knowledge that they might need. It's kind of a trivia game. It's called Box of Rocks. And it really, it begs the question is, are you smarter than a box of rocks? And it's very silly and simple, and it takes very little time. And what you have is a box of rocks. You have two plastic rocks, and they have either a mark or no mark on their sides. And what you do is you ask a question. And the question is either answered with the answer of zero, one, or two. So for example, a question might be, he chased him for his entire career, but how many times did Wile E. Coyote actually catch the Roadrunner? And then you say, well, your answer, I don't know, you say two. And so then you shuffle the box, you see what number is on there, and the box said one, and you said two, and the answer is actually one. So the box gets a, a rocks get a point, and while the humans are stuck at zero, the first one to three points wins. Now you could try another one. How many Nobel Prizes are awarded in Norway? Let's see how you do. Make a guess. The box says one, and the answer is one. The box gets a point. Where are the humans? Another game I really enjoy is called the Unlock series. Now, if you have any interest in escape room games or puzzle games, the Unlock series is an excellent place to start. Um, this one is the second in a series called the, uh, the No Side Story. The first one that I'd really like you to start with is called Squeak and Sausage. It's Unlock, exclamation mark, Squeak and Sausage. And of the Unlock series, there's a difficulty level rating of one, two, or three padlocks as you unlock the game. The Squeak and Sausage is just difficulty level one padlock. Uh, kids really enjoy that and it's a great place to start if you do like it and you need something more challenging of course you could go to the two or three padlock series or there's other escape games but this is a great place to start where you're left with a, a mystery to solve and you have a series of cards that you can see and put together as clues it also involves some math all right I call these cross divisional games because they work really well across divisions as far as ages of kids. Like I said before, if the rules aren't working, change the rules of the game so that it's fun. Um, the same thing works for the, the, on the side of the box that tells you what age the game is designed for. But sometimes you gotta make your own rules as far as age is concerned because of your child and how they approach the game and how they like the game and that sort of thing. Uh, when I talked about Go Away Monster, that was the first game that I used on my child and that was when she was two. I think it says three and up on the box. So the same thing with these cross-divisional games. They work really well for middle school students. They work really well for lower school students. It really depends on the student and if you want to simplify or add extra rules. All right. The first game I'd like to talk about is called Pictures. It was just put out by Rio Grande Games. And this one's an interesting one where you have a grid of pictures and you secretly draw and figure out which picture you're supposed to recreate. And then you have a series of construction objects where then you build the, the picture in three-dimensional form. And then you go around and guess what other people were building and what picture they had. So it's a mixture of apples to apples with three-dimensional objects. It's, it's a lot of fun. Another game I'd like to talk about is called Clank. Uh, this one's a little more involved game where you are an adventurer and you start out at the top and you go around and you're stuck in caves or you find secrets and you get deeper and deeper and deeper into the dungeon and you're trying to find secrets. Now, sometimes uh, as you go, the dragon will get angry and as the dragon gets angry, you will draw cubes from the bag. 
sometimes it's just the dragon cubes is not a problem but sometimes it's your own cubes in which case that's a danger because you are increasing the danger that you're not going to make it out alive once the dragon is enraged enough you have to get out of the dungeon with your treasures before the dragon eats everyone in the dungeon now the way it works is it's a deck building game it starts with a certain amount of cards but you can keep adding cards to your deck some that allow you to go faster some that allow you to fight monsters others that let you to buy more cards or go faster it's a combination of things sometimes you run into monsters even and you have to fight them and sometimes the dragon attacks you so your deck gets larger and larger and more and more specific as you go for clank there's also a legacy version where it's a series of 15 games it's called clank legacy acquisitions incorporated once again it's kind of story driven as uh, you're working for Acquisitions Incorporated, going out and having adventures, and there's certain goals that you need to achieve along the way. And as you go, you actually change the board as you're putting new stickers on, new adventures, new cards. It's story-driven and it's, it's enjoyable by kids of lower school and middle school age. Space Base is another game that I really enjoy. This one um, doesn't take a lot of forethought, uh, and you, it you roll the dice and you see what happens so you roll the dice and this way I got a two and a six so I have a choice I can either activate my two card and my six card which would give me one or and two gold so two money like that or I can combine the dice and say aha the eight gives me three so I'm gonna have three now out in the tableau is gonna be a series of cards that I can buy with my money and all the cards do various things. So they can make me more money if I roll them, they can uh, give me victory points, or they can do special uh, actions. And so if I were to buy this one, then I would put it in my tableau, replacing the former one, which then is reversed and placed upside down. Now what happens if someone else playing the game rolls a seven, then it activates all the red zones. The red zones don't come to effect unless it's someone else's turn and the more cards you get the more stuff you'll get during other people's turns and so there's no downtime in the sense that even while other people are taking turns you're paying attention to seeing what numbers they roll to see what kind of resources you get another game that works very well cross divisionally and doesn't take much time is called point salad point salad is you're collecting vegetables to get points Everything from tomatoes and onions and lettuce and cabbage and peppers and carrots and yes, I know peppers and tomatoes are actually fruit. But anyway, you get the idea that you can have different types of salad and on your turn you can either take two of the uh, produce items or you can take what gives you points in the end is a point card. This one lets you say, well, at the end of the game if you have the most tomato cards you get 10 points. This one says if you have a tomato, carrot, and cabbage at the end of the game, you get eight points. But if you have two of each, then you get eight times two, and so on and so forth. You can keep on getting the points. This one here says if you have a tomato, for every tomato you get a point, for every carrot you get a point. This one says, well, carrots are worth three, but the other two are worth negative one, so you have to watch what you get. And so let's say you take a lettuce and a carrot, and so this flips up and this flips up. And so the game ends when the piles are empty and then you just calculate the points. Another game I really enjoy and it works great cross divisionally is called Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion. And this one is fantastic because everyone takes on a role. You could be uh, Velma, you could be Shaggy, you could be Scooby, Daphne or Fred, any one of the mystery gang incorporated. And what you have is a series of tiles and you have your little characters each with a number in front of them and you could take a look at something for example you could look at this dish here uh, which happens to have candies on it and it's labeled 201 well if you're looking at it with Velma you would look in Velma's research book and look at since her number is 1 you'd say 1201 and you'd read the entry so Velma says I've got more important things to do than to fill my tummy but Shaggy would love these candies thinks Velma concerned for her lost companion so then you say okay well let's send Shaggy in there now Shaggy he doesn't research he eats and so his number is two and so we look at two two zero one and so this is given to someone else to read two two zero one says like don't mind if I do all this hiding makes me hungry 
Shaggy says, his stomach growling. The strawberry candies are delicious. That Lord Fairmont is great taste. Wait, what's that at the bottom of the bowl? And then it says, remove card 27 from play and reveal card 8. And so as you go along, you're investigating more and more things that happen in the game and give you clues to solve the mystery of who done it. And what's fascinating is you can get uh, more and more tiles. And so the game, the, uh, the mansion itself expands as the game goes on. In addition, there are secret envelopes to open, which give you further clues as the gang continues to investigate. So Velma is research, Shaggy is eat, Scooby is smell, Fred is investigate, and Daphne is use, if you need to use an item. All right, now I have a series of party games for you. Um, and just like everything else, if you don't like the rules, then change them. For example, one of the party games that I've really come to like is called Hive Mind. And what it is, is just a series of questions. And this is unlike other games in the sense that you don't need to know the right answer. You just need to know what other people are thinking. And if you, you roll the dice, you see where the queen goes, and it tells you how far out of the hive the person who's least like the other people go. So everyone has their little different colors of bees and you have to move a certain number of spaces. Whoever leaves the high first loses, everyone else wins. You could play it like that according to the rules, or you could just play it and find out how close you are. So one of the questions are, what are, uh, which two people in the room would least like to be a boss? Or what are four things with wheels? Or what are three movies with a direction in the title? or what are three purple things, all kinds of questions, and everyone writes down their answers, and they go around and see how many people have the answer. So if three other people had the same answer as you, you all get four points. If seven other people have the same answer as you, you will get eight points. And whoever has the least amount of points then starts to leave the hive, or you could just play the game and see how often you're with the hive mind. That's the way I like to play. Another game is called Time's Up. Probably the best edition of it is called Title Recall, where you're trying to remember the, uh, the titles of songs and movies and books and that sort of thing. And what it is, it's just a codified um, parlor game in the sense that they might try to get you to guess The Muppet Show or Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Or another card might have the Armageddon or another card might have um, some no, New York, New York or Hound Dog, or Wild Thing, or Dr. Strange Glove. Now, a lot of these are a little more middle school-ish, but uh, there is a junior version that the kids can play as well. And the first round, you can use up however much you, time you want and say anything that you want. And then you get through all the cards, where everyone gets through all the cards, and whichever team is getting more right gets more points. The second round, then, is the cards are reshuffled, and you start going through them, and you're only allowed to say one word. So you're kind of basing it on the first round, what clues were given to get the right answer. And then the third round once again goes in, and this time you can't say anything, it's just charades. And by that time it gets pretty hilarious, especially if the real clue has nothing to do with the original um, title. Um, this one I really enjoy. This one works fairly well even on Zoom, it's called Just One. And essentially what you do on your turn, it's a cooperative game officially where everyone's working together. Uh, you pick a card, but you don't look at it. Everyone else can see it. And you place it in front of you and you say a number, one through five. And let's say we say the number three. In this case, it's, um, I'm sorry, you say the number four. I'm sorry. You say the number four and you say sand. And so everyone comes up with a word that will help the person who drew the card guess sand. And so we came up with um, hourglass and beach and desert. And so once everyone's ready, then they turn them around and reveal it. And the person who drew the card takes a look at beach, desert, hourglass, and hopefully they guess sand. Now the only caveat is if more than one person put uh, hourglass or desert, then that clue is out and the guesser has fewer to work with. So the trick of this game is trying to think of a clue that's not so esoteric that it will never be guessed, but at the same time not so easy that everyone's going to guess it because then the guesser doesn't have anything to work with. 
Uh, it's very rapid and it also does a point system, but we just kind of do it once or twice around and then call it a day and that's a fun one. Another part of the game that I like is called Half Truth. It's put out by Ken and Jennings, uh, the Jeopardy champion, and Richard Garfield, who made Magic the Gathering. You may have heard of that one. Um, essentially, it's a series of questions, but the nice thing about this trivia game is you don't have to know the real answer. So even younger children can guess. So for example, countries where people drive on the left, and then you're given six choices. Uh, like this one is Norway, Japan, Brazil, Bahamas, Egypt, or South Africa. And so what you do is then you say, okay, well, I think that, you know, Egypt is one, and the Bahamas was one, and Japan was one. And so you put out the chips where you think it is, the other people put out their chips, sometimes they'll agree with you, sometimes they won't. And then you just flip it over to see which ones were true and which ones were not. Uh, another game that I really like is called Codenames. Um, and this one's become popular enough that it has uh, spawned different versions. The first version was Codename Pictures. And so this works especially well with younger children. Uh, but they also have Codenames Disney and Codenames Marvel, etc., etc., where they just have those pictures of people. And essentially the, the game works like this where you have uh, a secret grid that shows uh, the team blue and team red and which ones they're supposed to pick. In addition it shows ones that no one has and then there's ones called the uh, the assassin and essentially if you, your team picks that one it automatically loses the game. And so you're trying to uh, get your teammates to guess which ones are the correct ones uh, according to your colors. And if so, let's say you're on the red team and they get a correct, then they will claim it as a correct one. And it's possible to string two or three of these together at once. If they guess the other team's color, then the other team gets it. And the first one to get rid of their tokens first without being assassinated is the winner. So these are some of the games out there that I think out of the box are a lot of fun and can be enjoyed with family and children. Not only will the adults enjoy it, but the kids will get a kick out of it too. I appreciate your attention. I hope that these games resonate with you as well. And if you need a list of the games, you'll find it at the end along with the manufacturers so you can better find them out in the wild and Amazon beyond.